Vaccination is a common procedure in adult cattle and young stock. Vaccines help to reduce the incidence or the severity of disease by stimulating the immune system to provide protection. Vaccines are therefore part of many herd health management plans. One of the main steps to ensure optimal response to vaccination is using the appropriate technique. In this film, we're going to look at how to safely and effectively vaccinate cattle. We asked David Black, a veterinary surgeon with years of experience of working with large animals and advising producers on using vaccines, what kind of things are important when you vaccinate cattle. It's important before you start a vaccination programme that you speak to your veterinary surgeon and you make sure that the vaccination programme you're using is appropriate for the animals so that you're going to get the best from that vaccine and get the best protection for those animals. It's also very important that you only vaccinate healthy animals. Sick animals will have a compromised immune system and therefore will respond poorly to the vaccine or perhaps not at all. That's why the packaging on vaccines will actually say to only vaccinate healthy animals. There are some exceptions to this rule. For example, in the face of an IBR outbreak, you may be recommended to vaccinate animals that are already affected with the disease. But you should speak to a veterinary surgeon about that before you go ahead. This film will cover the preparation of both equipment and vaccine, handling of cattle, injection site and technique, how to avoid muscle damage, record keeping, and finally, a reminder on cleaning and maintenance of equipment. The first step is to prepare the equipment. Vaccines are available in different volumes. So make sure you know the number of animals that are to be vaccinated. You can then ensure you order the correct volumes. Certain vaccines need to be prepared by mix powder or a freeze-dried pellet with the solution provided before use. The powder or pellet contains the actual vaccine and it is important to reconstitute the vaccine only with the solution provided. The solution can either be just a solvent or in some cases may also contain active vaccine components. Once the vaccine is made up or a vial is broached, it will only be effective for a short period of time, usually a matter of hours. This is due to the fact that the reactivated particles in the reconstituted vaccine have a short lifespan. Always use a needle appropriate for the size of the animal being vaccinated. Small bore needles have a higher gauge. For example, a 21 gauge needle has a smaller bore compared to a 16 gauge needle and may be more appropriate when vaccinating smaller animals such as calves. The smaller the needle, the less painful the injection is likely to be. However, a needle that is too small will require the person giving the injection to use more pressure to inject the vaccine. Similarly, a small needle may hinder injection speed. In addition, shorter, wider bore needles, half inch, 16 gauge, are less likely to break or bend compared to a longer and thinner needle, one and a half inch, 21 gauge. The length of needle required is determined by the thickness of the skin and the administration route, as in the muscle or under the skin. The injection technique you use plays a role here as well, as you will see later on. The volume of vaccine determines the size of the syringe you will use. The volume of most vaccines ranges between 2 and 5 mil per animal, but there are exceptions, so make sure you administer the right dose rate. When vaccinating multiple animals at any one time, a repeater or multi-dose vaccinator is more convenient. However, single-dose disposable syringes can also be used. In this film, we demonstrate a commonly used vaccinator gun, but many other types are available. Points to consider when choosing equipment are Safety The protective cap over the needle provided by several companies can be helpful. Sometimes these protective caps contain disinfectants which should not be used in combination with certain vaccines. The number of animals you will vaccinate in one go as large repeater guns will reduce refill time. 
Frequency of vaccination. If you use your vaccination equipment frequently, durable, well-maintained equipment is more economical and pleasant to work with. Volume of vaccine used per animal. Multi-dose vaccinators may have only one setting, while others are adjustable within a certain range, usually one to five or 10 millilitres. When using different vaccines, a gun with adjustable injection volumes can be beneficial. Once you have got all your equipment together, it's important you avoid exposure to sunlight and keep the vaccine at the appropriate temperature. Most vaccines should be stored between 2 and 8 degrees Celsius. However, some need to be warmed to room temperature before use. You can do this by taking them out of the fridge a couple of hours before you use them. Do not use hot water or a microwave to warm them up. Storage of vaccines at the wrong temperature is a very common reason for vaccine failure and this applies from the time you pick up the vaccine until you inject it into your animals. Vaccines change even though the name of the vaccine may not have changed. By that I mean that the dose rate or the actual route of administration may have changed. So it's very important that the farmer familiarises himself with the latest information. So looking at the package insert, the data sheet, or what's now called the summary of the product characteristics, the SPC, to make sure that the vaccine is being used correctly. It's very important for the vaccine to work correctly that the manufacturer's recommendations are followed. When giving a course of vaccine, it's important that the second dose is given at the correct time interval after the first one. This is usually two to six weeks, but that can vary. And it's also very important that booster vaccinations are given at the correct intervals. This might be once a year or up twice a year. For the vaccine to have its full efficacy, the full course of vaccination and the boosters must be followed correctly. So there are currently no meat or milk withdrawal periods for cattle vaccines licensed in the UK. Some vaccines are not recommended for lactating animals or for pregnant animals. However, some vaccines are specifically designed to be used in late pregnancy so that the immunity from the cow is passed through her colostrum to the calf and this ensures that the calf itself receives adequate immunity. Very little research has been done to find out how vaccines will react if mixed in the same animal on the same day. This is largely down to lack of trial work rather than the fact that we know there will be an adverse reaction. However, if a farmer would like to combine vaccines on the same day, it's worth discussing this with his vet. Unless specifically mentioned on a data sheet, on no account should a vaccine or any other treatment be mixed in the same syringe. The next step is to adequately restrain the cattle to be vaccinated. Handling facilities vary greatly, therefore the best setup is dependent on your facilities, but ensuring that it is safe for both operator and animal is key. It is important to have clear access to the injection site, so ensure that the cow is restrained securely before trying to administer the injection. So the ideal area to inject is in the middle of the neck, a hand's width in front of the shoulder blade, just under the neck edge and above the neck vertebra. So it's important to avoid injecting animals that are wet or soiled as this increases the risk of contamination of the injection site. Disinfecting the skin, as you see performed in humans, tends not to be done in cattle, as their coat makes it very difficult to disinfect that area effectively. However, when the correct technique is used, complications seldom occur. It's important to check that the right amount of vaccine is being delivered to the animal. So when you drop the vaccine, make sure there's no bubbles in the barrel of the vaccination gun or syringe because giving one and a half mils instead of two would have quite a significant effect on the efficacy of the vaccine. If the vaccine is to be administered in the muscle, it's important that the needle is inserted at a 90 degree angle to the surface of the skin. Whereas if the vaccine is to be administered under the skin, the needle should be inserted more parallel to the skin. And this can be best achieved by lifting the skin and then inserting the needle into the skin fold. It's important to change the needle regularly as using dirty needles can increase the chance of an abscess developing around about the injection site. It's also possible to transmit diseases between animals by using the same needle. This risk is avoided if a new needle is used for every animal or at very least changing the needle between different groups of animals on the same farm. 
A needle only costs a few pence and therefore should be replaced when it gets bent or blunt. Very rarely a needle will break and can be left in the animal. In this unfortunate situation it's important to mark the animal and the location of the vaccination. Record this event in your records book and contact your vet. Your head health plan will also have a broken needle policy section that you can refer to. When repeated doses of vaccine are to be extracted from the same bottle, you should leave a single clean needle in the bottle and use an entirely different needle to inject the animals. This prevents contamination of the vaccine solution in the bottle. Take care when injecting animals as veterinary vaccines can cause serious injection reactions if you accidentally inject yourself or a colleague. If self-injection does happen, always seek medical advice from your GP. The neck is the preferred vaccination site for any injection, be it vaccines, antibiotics or dewormers. It is advisable to avoid the hind quarters, hip or thigh, regardless of age or purpose of cattle, as the vaccination can damage muscle at the injection site. In fact, up to 6% of cattle carcasses contain abscesses and the common cause for these is either injecting stock using dirty needles or a poor injection technique. Abscesses have to be cut out of the carcass, which reduces meat yield. Record the vaccine which has been used and the date of injection for all vaccinated animals in your herd health plan and medicine book. Keeping these records for five years is a legal requirement and is requested by many farm assurance schemes. Don't forget to vaccinate bulls but keep in mind that occasionally, for some purposes, such as semen collection or export, animals cannot be vaccinated as it may affect the results of disease testing from bulk milk or blood samples from those animals. If the data sheet does not say the vaccination is registered for bulls, contact the vaccine company and check with them if it's OK. The more animals in your herd which are vaccinated, the better the herd level protection against disease will be. It is recommended to make your vet aware of recent vaccinations when TB testing, as both are applied in the same area of the neck. If possible, choose and record one side of the neck for TB testing and use the other side for vaccination. This will make it less likely to confuse a possible vaccination reaction lump for a TB reaction. Vaccinating your cattle on the second day of the TB test will also help overcome confusion over possible lumps. Firstly, ensure all sharps are disposed of appropriately. Cleaning the vaccinator gun with a soapy solution is important as any residues left may provide a breeding ground for germs. The vaccinator gun can be taken apart for further cleaning. However, the inside of the gun can best be cleaned using only water. A soapy solution may inactivate the next vaccine used. It is also important to make sure you thoroughly dry the inside of the equipment after cleaning. Once dry, the gun should be reassembled, re-lubricated with food-grade vegetable oil and stored in a clear plastic bag away from sunlight. Vaccine bottles can only be kept for a short time once opened and must be stored at the correct temperature. It is important to check the data sheet for the storage requirements. Freezing is detrimental for most vaccines. Therefore, a max-min thermometer, indicating the highest and lowest temperatures in your fridge, is a great investment to ensure adequate storage. Some vaccines do not contain any preservatives. Therefore, any leftover that is not being used within the described time must be thrown away. The majority of vaccines need to be disposed of in a pharmaceutical waste bin Overall, the key aspects to remember are Store and use the vaccine at the correct temperature from the moment you pick it up till the moment you use it. Use the vaccine at the correct time, interval, dose and route. All this information can be found on the data sheet. Full details of all veterinary medicines authorised for use in the UK are available on the Veterinary Medicine Directorate website. 
If you believe the vaccine is not effective, report this to your vet, the pharmaceutical company or the veterinary medicines directive as a suspected adverse event. The other key aspects are ensure good hygiene when using the vaccine and equipment, ensure adequate safety for people and animals involved, and finally, ensure accurate recording of vaccinations is carried out. To wrap up, we asked David what he would like farmers to take away from this video. A well-designed vaccination programme carried out correctly is very important to get the best out of the vaccine and therefore should be incorporated into the farm management plan. This will ensure that the animals have got the very best chance of responding to the vaccine and that's going to give them the best chance of being healthy and productive. It's also important to remember that vaccine development is ongoing and therefore the farmer should speak to his vet at least once a year to find out if there's been any changes or improvements in the vaccines that he might use on that unit. The health and welfare of the animals during the vaccination programme, as well as the safety of the operators, is very important also and should only be carried out by competent people. If at all in doubt, the farmer should speak to his veterinary surgeon to find out what techniques and protocols he could use to vaccinate those animals safely. We hope you found this video useful. You can find more information about vaccinating cattle in the UK on the following websites from Eblex, the Veterinary Medicine Directorate, the Responsible Use of Medicines in Agriculture Alliance, the National Animal Disease Information Service and of course Dairyco.